Hello, hello everyone, it's Daily Space Observations and welcome back to another video. Before I get into the topic of today, if you like space news, astrophotography, astronomy, you know, all that stuff, then you've come to the right place, my friend, because I got all that right here. So be sure to subscribe, leave a like, and turn on that notification bell so that you'll be the first to know when I upload a brand new video. You can also go follow me on my Twitter and Instagram links will, links will be down below in the description. So if you want to see sneak peeks of my upcoming videos, you know where to find them. So with that being said, let's just jump into it. So this happened like one or two months ago maybe. I updated the firmware on my Celestron telescope, specifically its hand control. You know that little remote control. Yeah, you get it. So yeah, I updated that. And you know, it should be simple, right? I mean, all you're doing is just plugging in your hand control into your computer, download the CFM, which stands for the Celestron Firmware Manager, and then just download it, get the software, and then put it on your telescope. It should be that simple, right? Well, no. I hit a lot of dead ends. It was it was confusing. You had to download a bunch of extra stuff I didn't find out about until like the last second. Uh, there's a bunch of software. I even tried contacting Celestron support and not even they could give me an exact direction of what to do. But after about a month or more of just randomly guessing with softwares and downloading them, I miraculously figured out how to do it. So if you're having trouble updating your computerized telescope, I got you, man. So I'll show you how right now. Please note that to do this whole process, you must have all the softwares I mentioned earlier downloaded. Links are down below in the description, as I mentioned earlier. All right, so now the first step is to open the folder that the CFM comes in. And so the CFM folder will probably come in your downloads folder since, you know, you downloaded it. So just go in your downloads and then see it says CFM 2.7, yeah, that stuff. So just open it and then open the folder. And so this is where I got stumped and I never heard anyone talk about this. So yes, you will have to download Java to open the CFM file, which is this. But there's another step that no one told me I didn't see in the tutorial, not even Celestron support told me. So what you're gonna wanna do is just extract all these things. And so I can't really extract it since I already did it, like th there's no option here. But what, but what you're gonna wanna do is just right click anywhere within this here, just right click and it should say like extract all or extract all files or something. So please ex so so please extract all these files here otherwise the cfm is just going to crash every time you try to open it all right so just open the firmware manager all right so we have the firmware manager opened that's the first step then what you have to do is take a mini USB cable, here's the end of it, so if you don't have one of these just go buy them, they sell them at any technology store, they're not that hard to find. So just take a mini USB cable, plug the, plug the cable end into your computer, like so. Then what you're gonna want to do is take the other side of the mini USB cable, this little side here, and if you look under the hand control of the Celestron telescope, then you'll see there's a mini USB port on the bottom. So what you gotta do is just plug this in, plug that into your computer, and then it is ready to go. So you have your telescope on and plugged into your computer. The CFM is opened and ready to be used. Yet, when you try to search for telescopes, it won't find anything. And that is because the CFM only finds telescopes through serial ports. The only problem is most modern computers of today don't have serial ports, so there is no valid way of finding the telescope from the CFM. But there is a software you can download that digitally converts USB ports to serial ports, allowing your telescope to find your computer or bleh, so on and so forth. 
So how do you use this software? Well, I'll show you. So this software is called the PIA Check PL2303 chip. Yeah, it's a pretty complicated name. It doesn't have an official name. Uh, so what you're gonna want to do is simply try out all these and see there's a bunch of COM ports here. It goes from 1 all the way to 15. So unfortunately, there is no way of finding a COM port first try. So you're gonna have to check all of these ports until it detects a PL2303 chip. So here, let's start with COM1. It says open COM port failed. Let's check 2 open COM port failed. So this might take a while. Here we go. So it's COM8 and it says it is a PL2303SA chip, which is the port we're looking for. So. Now that we have that done, let me show you how to activate the telescope. Alright, so what you have to do now is turn on the telescope, but before you do that, make sure that you are holding down the logo button and the menu button. So just hold them down, and then we will turn the telescope on. Just flick the switch, and then it should say bootloader serial user keypad entry and i'll just take my mini usb plug and if it and if it isn't already just plug it into the telescope and now we are ready to use the cfm all right so now that we have the telescope plugged in and a com port or or a serial port found just open up the cfm just wait for it to open up completely Alright, so it's open now, so it says seeking compatible telescopes. It, it, it could take a bit, so just wait until it finds your telescope. Alright, so it has found my telescope, it picked it up, and see it says CF CFM has discovered one device. If you look on the list of devices, it says a Nexstar Plus, which is, um, which is the mount that my telescope has, and it says serial port COM8, which is, if you remember, the same port that I used in the PL2301 check chip. Yeah, I forget. <laughs> so now all you have to do is press update, and then, oh yeah, and, and be sure that you are connected to Wi-Fi because it has to download the packages. So now just wait a bit for it to update and then you'll be good to go. Hey guys, welcome back. So I did stop it while it was updating. So if you're skeptical, if this video actually works, here you go. See, it says all your devices are up to date. It still has my telescope on. So yeah, this, this process does indeed work. I've done it a lot of times. So yeah, don't worry about it. I wouldn't do that. So this is the end of the video. I hope it helped you and I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like and turn on that notification bell and I will see you next time. Bye.